Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Bowser New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got another picture is worth a thousand words for you. This time it's a picture from August of 1968. While the ship is conducting a, a training cruise, it seems, this photo is labeled as being from August of 1968, which would put her in the Long Beach area. Uh, theoretically, on August 2nd, she makes it to Long Beach and goes into the yard for some final tune-up. Uh, during this time, some new equipment is installed and some old 40s stuff, uh, such as many of the gun tubs, are cut off of the ship. Those gun tubs still appear to be here in this picture, uh, which leads me to believe it might be before that Long Beach Yard period, and therefore the picture may be misdated. Or, she isn't strictly in the yard during this time, and she might be going in and out of the yard during this tune-up period. Other pictures in this series show a lieutenant commander who's wearing uh, a visitor ID badge that says he is a training officer. So this may well be a training cruise uh, for some final, final qualifications before the ship leaves for Vietnam on September 2nd. So, uh, let's look at this picture. First of all, you can see that there is a landmass behind the ship, and the ship is uh, making her way out to sea and... Um, in the middle of a turn as we speak. So she's coming out of the Long Beach area. If this camera was to pan around back in the direction she's turning from, uh, that, that could very well show us the entrance to um, however you get to Long Beach, uh, uh, under whatever bridge, past the Queen Mary, and then on to the shipyard there. I don't know, I'm from the East Coast. So, uh, Let's start at the top of the picture and work our way down. You can see that uh, there's black smoke coming out of the aft funnel. It looks like they have just blown down their stacks. It may be that now they are far enough away from land that they're willing to do this without blowing soot all over uh, the city of Long Beach. It certainly gives you an idea of why the top of the stack and the masts above that are painted that black color, because they're, they're constantly getting pummeled with this exhaust like that. Uh, traveling down from there, you can see that the boat crane on the fan tail of the ship is pointed straight out the back of the ship. You would not see this on the ship in World War II or uh, Korea. The crane is almost always pointed forwards, except for when we're doing helicopter ops. During the Vietnam War, we are largely doing helicopter ops, so the crane is almost always taken off the back of the ship. However, they don't cut it off like they do in the 80s because we would have carried ship's boats on the fantails, and to deploy them, you're still using that old uh, uh, aviation crane. The first thing that catches your eye in this picture is probably the red painted gun tub. There is, uh, you can see a gun tub. This is going to be on, uh, I believe it's the O3 level, the top of the superstructure. This is, uh, where there were a pair of quadruple 40 millimeter guns, one on each side of the after fire control tower. And this is interesting because you can see that they're on a raised platform. They're, they're not welded to the deck of the ship. So this allows water to continue to drain aft. I would class battleships do sit down at the stern, especially when they get at high speed, their, their uh, stern sinks down into the water and their bow rises up a little bit. So uh, water draining off of the superstructure can make it under that gun tub to the uh, drain pipes back there. So why is one gun tub painted that uh, deck, deck gray color? Why is one gun tub painted red? Well, it's primer. It seems like they've uh, just finished painting inside that tub. They've chipped it, they've painted it, and uh, now they have to put a top coat on. It is interesting that they have retained these gun tubs at all. They will, of course, be removed by the 1980s where uh, and Tomahawk missiles are installed more or less in that same location. Um, the guns are obviously removed, but they chose not to cut that tub off. Looking below those gun tubs on either side on the main deck, you can see that the starboard side, or the left-hand side of this picture, there is no gun tub. There should be a quad mount down there, and uh, obscured by the angle of the picture. On the port side, or the right-hand side of this picture, you can see that there is a tub there. Most of these gun tubs are left on the ship when she sails from Philadelphia. 
but in Long Beach, many of them are cut off. If I could guess, I would say that's uh, some of the hand trucks for oxyacetylene welding kits that are stored in there. Uh, so it might be other shipyard tools that they're using. And that might be right if the ship is in a yard period and she comes up briefly for this training cruise pre-deployment um, and then goes back in for the rest of her yard period. That might check out. The key feature in this picture that um, is what drew us to it. If you look behind the port side five inch gun mount, you see a cylinder that's covered by a canvas tarp. That is the Zuni rocket launcher. We were very excited the other month to get to see one of these, uh, as far as I know, the only preserved ship that has one on USS Little Rock in Buffalo. Uh, so there's a link in the description below to that video where we talk specifically about that system. And this is probably the best picture of that that we see on board the ship. Unfortunately, it's covered in a tarp, so we can't see uh, what it is. You can see that it is a single tube. It's not two tubes like Little Rock has. We have a pair of single launchers. Uh, what we're looking at is the gun tub that's part of the three-tub uh, pyramid-style structure that's between the New Jersey's two smokestacks. We are looking at the aft lower one that has a Zuni rocket in it. Then you can see that there's one above that that's in the uh, basically the bottom right hand corner of the picture and that has a director uh, tub that's been built in it in place of the old 40 millimeter. And then forward of that there should be another lower tub that has another Zuni. So rather than having two uh, twin tube launchers, New Jersey has uh, four single tube launchers. Now, you can see that there is a little mast structure with some uh, lines coming off of it. Those are radio aerials coming off of the foremast. Going back to that, um, I believe it's off of the foremast. There's, yeah, there's no way that goes up the yard arms on the uh, main mast behind the funnel. So, uh, some of the radio equipment on the ship. Let's talk a little bit about this director. I believe that's a Mark 63 director. Would have been added in the late 50s as part of the planned upgrade to install three inch guns on the ship. There's a link in the description below to a video we did not too long ago about the blueprints uh, for the ship we found for installing the three inch guns. What's cool is the guns themselves were never installed, but the directors were depending on the Iowa class battleship. So New Jersey had these directors installed. Because the three inch guns were heavier than the 40 millimeters, they, some of the 40 millimeter positions that were deleted were turned into director tubs. And that's what we're looking at here. Another super interesting thing about this, the directors were not on the scope of work to be reactivated to Philadelphia Navy Yard. I believe the ship's crew reactivated this and man them, even though they weren't uh, set to be reactivated or billeted. Why would they reactivate three inch gun directors? They can serve as a backup for the five inch guns as well. They can be cross connected to the five inch system. So if something happens to the Mark 37 directors that normally aim the five inch guns, you can use those uh, Mark 63s. They are blind fire capable, so if uh, an aircraft is obscured or something like that, you can still use those directors. So it seems like uh, the crew had the free time and the wherewithal on their hands to um, reactivate them themselves. That said, it could have been done in Long Beach. Uh, I do not know the scope of work of that project, but it was really minimal things. I can't imagine they went in and they reactivated directors. Now, interestingly, you can see that the port side director is training over amidships and pointing out to the starboard side. Looking at the dish that is the radar antenna for this director, uh, you can see that it's not pointing out to sea on the port side, it's pointing across deck. You can also see that there's a guy sticking his head up out of the top of that director, and he's got, uh, it looks like something up to his eyes. It might be binoc binoculars or, or some other sort of uh, similar optics piece. Uh, so I get the impression that there might be a gunnery drill in the works. If these directors are manned, and if you look at uh, the aftermost 5-inch gun mount, the one that's here between this director and the gun tub on the main deck I just talked about, 
you can see a little bit of blue that is the dungaree shirt of the gun captain of that gun mount uh, sticking his head out of the top of it. Uh, you can see that there's a, a protected hood over that gun mount uh, for this purpose. And you can see that that gun mount is turned and the barrels are elevated. So I suspect they're conducting a gunnery drill. I suspect at the moment the target is off to the starboard side of the ship. Now, fortunately, we can't really see any of the starboard side guns. You can see the roof of the aftermost one. And it seems to be pointing straight out the, the starboard side of the ship. Uh, and that certainly matches what the two Mark 63 directors, the port and starboard ones, uh, seem to be pointing in that direction. So maybe that is uh, what is being tested. It is quite common for as many of the directors as can bear to co-witness on a target so that if one director goes out, the next one's already on target and can take over as soon as you cross connect it. Uh, so it could be that the five inch directors are aiming at this and the Mark 63s are just co-witnessing. It could be that uh, the, the Mark 63s have just been brought online and this exercise is specifically to see how they're working. Unfortunately, the funnel obscures the aft Mark 37 director for the five inch guns. So we can't see if those are in use or not. Otherwise, look at how beautiful and blonde those decks look. Uh, you can tell that, that the crew is already taking good shape of the ship. I'd love to see a picture where there is something being actively painted. You can tell that the deck is in good shape. You can tell that the, the aft stack has been recently painted and that gun director tub has been primed so you know it's in the process of being worked on. This, this is a ship that is uh, very much being maintained and being brought back to her full peak condition within a month of being sent uh, for her third war. Did you notice anything in the picture I missed? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you have other pictures that you'd like us to cover in a Pictures Worth a Thousand Words video in the future, there's a link in the description below to my Facebook page. Really hard to send pictures over YouTube, Try to describe the picture of the ship firing her guns, and I'm like, which one? There's a hundred of those. Uh, just shoot the picture over to my Facebook page, and I can see it, and then we can include it in a future Pictures Worth a Thousand Words video. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.